All right, let's talk about limits. I was talking with a friend of mine recently. We'll call him Kurt. It's not his real name, you know, trying to protect the ego of the innocent and all. Kurt is a very successful guy, but he kept talking about how he had hit his limit. He kept saying how he achieved his max in business, in his health, and in his marriage. And he said it with a sense of pride, which is probably the part that bothered me the most. I almost just let it go, but that is not what good friends do. So I said, you know, that's bullshit hockey, right? I blurted. I know I could have been more tactful, I'm sure. What's bull shiitake, he asked with a stunned look on his face. Admittedly, I was purposely trying to break his head or his mental pattern. This bull shiitake about your limits, you hitting your max and all, I said. What do you mean, he asked. Kurt, you gotta be careful how you talk. The shiitake that you say to yourself, I said, man. Look, it sounds like you're doing great and all, which, which I'm really happy for, but this isn't your limit, man. It's not even close. You're nowhere near your quote unquote max. You don't even know what your max is, buddy. Neither do I, but I guarantee you, this certainly ain't it for you or for me. Now the perplexed look on his face begged for a rant. So I gave him one. I said, I absolutely disagree with this idea that you keep promoting that you've ever find your limit. Now you can find your current limit, but you will never find your actual limit. Are you with me, I asked? Not waiting for a response, I just continued. There are no limits to your capacity. You are limitless. The only limits that you have are the ones that you self-imposed, but it is imaginary, it's made up, and it's very limiting and kind of annoying. I'll give you a for instance, I said. When you started lifting weights, the barbell by itself was your bench weight limit. Do you remember that? Way back when? Okay. You could have said, well, that's my limit. I've hit my max because it was at that moment. But guess what? Next month with growth and progress, your limit was now the bar with two 10 pound plates on either side. So what happened to your limit? Shattered, right? The last workout that I recall us doing together, we were pushing what? 315, he answered. Right, I said, that's three. 45 pound weights on each side, when previous your absolute limit was one 10 pound weight on each side. Do you see, I asked? I could tell that he needed more to marinate his brain with. So I asked, do you remember the story about Beverly? I shared it in the compound effect. Not wanting to embarrass his terrible memory or the fact that he did or did not read the compound effect, I continued. Beverly was always complaining about her weight. She wanted to lose it, but believed that her, uh, exercise limit was becoming winded after only a short flight of stairs. But we took her perceived limit and we built a plan to break it over and over and over again. Step by step, she kept running past her imagined limit. She ran the half marathon easily with no pain or discomfort, and she lost 50 pounds and transformed her life. And that was still not her limit. She went on to run four full length marathons thereafter and is still running strong. Did I ever introduce you to Devon, I asked. His name doesn't sound familiar, said Kurt. Devon was a talented engineer, but man, this guy was terrified of public speaking. I mean, break out in hives kind of terrified. He believed he didn't have the personality or inherent ability to stand in front of a group of people and deliver a presentation. This self-imposed limitation kept hurting his career. It kept him from seizing opportunities that came his way. It also kept him from pursuing his passion, which was helping disadvantaged young people like he had been find their way into STEM education. So I helped him gradually break through his illusions and limits bit by bit using the compound effect approach. Devon has become one of the most prominent influencers in STEM education today. He now speaks to audiences of tens of thousands all over the world. He's now the chairman of an organization that's helped enroll tens of thousands of students into STEM programs, education that will alter the course of their lives. That's amazing and all, but he started that process as a young buck. I'm no young buck, Kurt said. Holy Jesus, man, another limit. I might just have to smack you upside your head, I said, exacerbated. Let me tell you about Leela then, I said, probably too loud. 
Leela was a successful CFO. She worked at a prominent law firm and was now in her mid-50s. Leela had always admired the beauty of art, but she never thought that she had any artistic talent. She had taken a sketch class in college, but believed that was the, quote, limit of her creative ability. While she always yearned to, she never believed that she could ever paint anything worth sharing. In the letter that she wrote me, Leela said, after reading The Compound Effect on a whim, I signed up for a local painting class. You know, just for fun, she said. Nothing I'd ever share with anybody else. But, she said, when she dipped her brush into the paint and began to express herself on the canvas, something magical happened. She said, with each stroke, I discovered a hidden self, one that had been there all along but lay dormant for years. As Leela continued to practice and refine her skills, she began to create stunning works of art. Her paintings were soon featured in local galleries. Leela even began selling her pieces to art enthusiasts. Leela now has her own art exhibitions, and her art is covered and coveted by collectors all over the world. And she continues to grow beyond her quote unquote limits and max. Kurt said, okay, you got me, I get it. The things that I said earlier now do sound ridiculous, I admit. The things you said, everybody else says to themselves, I responded. Only the people around them let them get away with that shiitake. Well, I appreciate the headbutt. Apparently I needed it, Kurt said. That's what friends are for, I said. And with the smile of a guy with a bright idea, he said, you should really make this one of your Darren Daily messages. Many other people would probably benefit from what you just said. All right, I said, I will. And here I am doing it for you now. So remember, Darren Daily members, please remember, you are limitless. The only limits that you have are the ones that you place on yourself. Your thoughts are your only barrier. What's to stop you from consistently reading more, doing more push-ups, or learning more words in a new language? Not a limit, that's for sure. If you think that this sounds crazy, just try this. Do as many push-ups as you can. Record how many that you can do. If you believe in limits, that will be yours. But then I want you to do it again in a few days and record the number again. Keep doing it every few days. And at the end of 30 days, I have a feeling you'll be saying, dang it, that Darren really knows what he's talking about. Whatever you perceive to be your limit can be superseded. If you can only persevere and pursue progress step by inconceivably small step forward, repeated and continued over time, the accumulated and compound effect of those improvements will blow past any once perceived limit you've ever held. This is the grand goal, the juice and the very joy of life, seeing how much more we are capable of doing and becoming. Live your life with the curiosity to see what your body and your mind can really do and do it with the knowledge that you'll never really know how much you can accomplish. Becoming is a never ending journey, one where the passion and fulfillment is in the pursuit, not the attainment, the sheer joy and ecstasy of growing better every day. <laughs>